بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا تنادي فهم يا بني قوم يسودا أعيد للدنا أم جاد عصر وفل بالحديد لنا Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. There were comments on my videos with regards to Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, calling for Muslims to kill infidels. In the Quran there is a command to fight and slay the pagans, infidels or unbelievers, wherever they are found, or that's what many could mistakenly understand from the command. This video is a response to these comments. Quran is the word of God and was revealed to Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him over 23 years. During those years there were circumstances and different situations where the Quran was revealed to solve those situations. It took 23 years to cover all the aspect of human life. Therefore the worst thing to do with the Quran is to approach it seeking confirmation for what one already believes in and turning a blind eye on evidence that is inconsistent with his or her preconceived attitudes and biases. Anyone can find in the Quran whatever he or she wants to prove if he or she read part of it and left the rest. Same applies to the Bible. A simple example to explain the logic is that when the doctor tells you not to take your medicine while you're driving, someone may read half of the phrase and get himself confused as the doctor who prescribed the medicine is telling him not to take that. Others may assume that's illegal to take medicine at all. However if we understand the relationship between the doctor and the patient we can understand the phrase correctly. Therefore the challenge is to make a judgment only after a thorough and exhaustive investigation of all available Quranic evidence. The structure of the Quran makes it necessary to approach it using the dialectic both and methodology of reasoning. This means that to investigate a certain issue, the verses pertaining to the issue should be gathered together. The verses are then analyzed comprehensively while paying attention to the historical context, in Islamic terminology called the occasion of revelation, of each verse. In order to understand the context, we need to read the complete verse. Surah Tawbah chapter 9 verse 5 the Quran says, 9 colon 5. Then when the sacred months have passed, slay the idolaters wherever ye find them, and take them captive, and besiege them, and prepare for them each ambush. But if they repent, and establish worship, and pay the poor due, then leave their way free. Lo, Allah is forgiving, merciful. First this verse is quoted during a battle. Example of war between America and Vietnam. We know that America was once at war with Vietnam. Suppose the President of America or the General of the American Army told the American soldiers during the war, wherever you find the Vietnamese, kill them. Today if I say that the American President said, wherever you find Vietnamese, kill them, without giving the context, I will make him sound like a butcher. But if I quote him in context, that he said it during the war, it will sound very logical as he was trying to boost the morale of the American soldiers during the war. One of the main concerns of chapter, Surah, 9 of the Quran is to delineate the strategies for dealing with the polytheists of the Arabian Peninsula after the Muslims, under the leadership of Prophet Muhammad, peacefully captured Mecca, in January, 630, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him and his followers were joined by tribe after tribe along their way to Mecca, they entered Mecca without bloodshed and the Meccans, seeing the tide had turned, joined them. Mecca was the city that since the beginning of Islam leads the opposition and persecution of the Muslim converts. Since the polytheists differed in their relationship with the new religion, there was a need to differentiate between the malevolent enemies of Islam which are those who did not observe their treaties with the Muslims, and those who hated Islam but were willing to honor their treaties with Muslims. The aforementioned verse, 9-5 was concerned with the most vehement opponents of the Islamic faith not by virtue of their refusal to be Muslims but by continually breaching their treaties with the Muslims and fighting them. Given that, their treatment is not equal, the complete verse says, 
So when the sacred months have passed away, then fight and slay the pagans wherever you find them, and take them captives and besiege them and keep them under observation. Then if they repent and keep up prayer and pay the poor rate, leave their way free to them. Surely God is forgiving, merciful, meaning. So when the grace period, four months, is over, and if the other party insists on fighting Islam, then a state of war is inevitable. The struggle may take the form of killing, or capture and imprisonment, or just keeping an eye on these enemies to fend off their evil if they decide to launch an offensive against Muslims. The punishment should be fair and just, thus it must be proportional to the crimes actually committed. The pagans can repent and accept Islam, as evident from the last part of 950 or desist from attacking Muslims and ask for protection, as evident from the next verse, 9 to 6. And if any one of the idolaters seeketh thy protection, O Muhammad, then protect him so that he may hear the word of Allah, and afterward convey him to his place of safety. That is because they are a folk who know not. The Quran not only says that a disbeliever seeking peace during the battle should be granted refuge, but also that should be escorted to a secure place. In the present international scenario, even a kind, peace-loving army general during a battle, may let the enemy soldiers go free, if they want peace. But which army general will ever tell his soldier that if the enemy soldiers want peace during a battle, don't just let them go free, but also escort them to a place security. This is exactly what Allah Almighty says in the glorious Quran to promote peace in the world. Second, investigating history clearly shows that Muslims have never ever believed that they are under obligation to exterminate non-Muslims. That's because Muslims understand the Quranic verses. In fact, when the Islamic State was rapidly expanding during the period between the 7th and 8th century, many people came under the direct governance of Muslims. Those peoples belonged to different religions, races, ethnicities, etc. If the hypothesis that Muslims are required to eradicate non-Muslims or infidels was correct, then a pattern of deliberate extermination, forced conversions, and expulsion would have been observed throughout the history of Islam, especially when Muslims were powerful and winning over their opponents. But that was never the case. Historically people lived in peace and harmony during the Islamic ruling period. Egypt which was included in the Islamic State only 10 years after the demise of the Prophet, about 6 to 10 percent of the people as Christians. However Spain which was a place of peaceful coexistence between Muslims, Christians, and Jews lost this freedom when Ferdinand and Isabella signed the Edict of Expulsion designed to rib Jews in 1492. The Jews were given a stark choice, baptism or deportation. An estimated 50,000 fled to the Ottoman Empire where they were warmly welcomed. About 70,000 converted to Christianity and remained in the country only to be plagued by the Inquisition which accused them of insincerity. In 1499, the Spanish state gave its Muslims the same choice. Convert or leave. The result of these policies was simple. Spain almost entirely got rid of millions of people who were not Christians. Spain now has minority groups including Muslims coming mainly from North Africa as immigrants and some who are converting to Islam. Another example, India, or considerable parts of it, was for several centuries under the Muslim Mile Empire. Many of the subjects of the empire, up to and including very high-ranking state officials, were Hindu. Till now, India is a predominantly Hindu country. The facts on the ground belie the hypothesis that Muslims have believed that non-Muslims should be killed, evicted or forced to convert. On the other hand, if you research the translations of the Holy Quran such as Yusuf Ali, Shakir, and Pithal, you will not I find this word infidel, in any of them. The Arabic word kafir, kufar, was translated as disbelievers or unbelievers. This term was being used for centuries before the advent of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. The term infidel comes from the Latin word infidels, which means unbelieving, or unfaithful. During the Middle Ages the Catholic Church, Christians, used the term to describe Muslims, followers of Islam, the religion founded by the Prophet Muhammad.